Welcome. My name is Jenna. This is Functional Fitness Training. Um, if you are a veteran, you know that our, our uh, format is the 10 to 15 minutes of mobility up front. We're going to be working the hips and the core in our mobility set. And then the rest is the strength set. And if you're a newcomer, you'll get nice and familiar with that. So today's strength set is a circuit. It's three to four exercises that we do three times around and the cluster. So the first cluster is squat hinge and the second cluster is push pull core. So you're gonna have a full body workout, but those are the focuses today. So equipment you may want, or if you have, bring them out. We're focusing a little bit uh, on some kettlebell fundamentals. So light and heavy, but if you're rocking the dumbbells, yay, have those in, instead is a great option. So let's go dive in. Let's move. Okay, starting here, we're going to start in the center of our mat. Let's start by some easy crisscrosses of the upper body. So you're kind of giving yourself a hug. And just feel that swing. Good. We're just going to slow it down slightly. You're going to open up, squeeze the shoulder blades, hold, and then bring it together push the hands into each other, right? So just a little different today, slowing down a movement we often start class with just to get that end range mobility. Ooh, because we'll be working it all today. And last one, big shoulder circles. Let's start with that nice dynamic, big arm circles, and then we'll keep, we'll slow it down a little bit. So as you do your arm circles, I want you to think about that full range but think about keeping the rib cage down, yes? Let's go ahead and reverse the arm circles. Now we're going the opposite direction. Keeping that rib cage down, breathe in. Yes. Okay, are we ready to slow things down? I think we are. Let me join you here. Everybody, whatever direction you're gonna keep, you're gonna go slow, 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 and try to go to the sticky spots, but keeping that shoulder anchored down, oh. It feels so different, just changing that pace. And I want you to remember that throughout this workout. You can do something fast, but when you slow it down, it's incredibly different. So use that as an opportunity. Okay, reverse whatever direction you have, and we're gonna go slow the opposite direction. Use that as an opportunity to explore your workout today. Four nice big circles, up, 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 and over. Whew. And relax, let's take it down low. Stand it on one leg, go ahead and swing. Ah, we'll do it fast, we'll do it slow. But for now, just find that balance. Keeping that rib over hip, that's part of the core work. All right, now let's do it slow. So take that leg up, 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 keep that hip down and anchored. Lift as high as you can without hiking, yeah? Might not be very high. Ooh, now take it into that extension of the hip as far as you can go back without arcing. So keep that low back anchored, back, back, back. We're using that glute max. Okay, four more times. Up, 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 up. Back, 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 back. Isolating the range in the hip and keeping that core and back stable. About two more. Oh, work up on that opposite angle too. Nice. And last one, because that's the key to any kettlebell movement or any functional movement is knowing your range of motion. Let's start other side going quick. You might have to make sure you're not kicking any kettlebells or dumbbells. Let's swing, swing, second side. Let it all go. Let it happen. Ah, feel that release through the hip. Okay, we're gonna slow it down four times. Let's take it into flexion and extension. Standing on top of that leg, up, up, up. Keeping that hip down, toe point pointing up, parallel. And go bring it back. Glute extension, neutral back. That's one. Let's do that three, four more times. Ooh, no if. At the each round you go, you might be able to go a little higher. And that's a maybe, right? Observe, two more. Up, 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 work in the hip mobility today and core mobility, this is part of it. Back and forth, about two more times. And last one, stand tall, beautiful, beautiful. And make room where you can step back into a reverse lunge. Here we go, reverse it, alternate. 
So at some point, keep reversing. I'm gonna ask you to take the single leg deadlift and I'm gonna ask you to combine it with the reverse lunge and a lateral lunge because that's our hip mobility today. For now, we're sticking with one, but I want you to start cementing the difference in weight placement in each different one. So weight placement is in the front of a foot on a lunge, front foot. Careful of the chub back. Ah, it's an upper foot party. Beautiful work. Four more. Three, two, and when you have time, let's move side to side. Here we go. So finding space. Now we're moving laterally. Foot steps out, hip placement, weight placement into the outside foot. Good. Try to keep both feet down though. Some people tend to curl out. Good rule of thumbs to keep both feet down if it feels good to you. About four more. Two. Three. Two. And one. Okay, you're ready for the mix up. Here it is. One single leg deadlift. Woo. Let's try it together. Here. Up. One reverse lunge. One lateral. So your hip moves up and up, back and side. That's our mobility, okay? You wanna mark it with me? Feel free to I'll call it out or go your own pace. We're doing it eight times. Ready, set, here we go. Single leg deadlift, get those arms out. Tilt, knee up, hold, reverse it. Come back to that knee up. Now that outside knee, step out, lunge it laterally. That's one, seven more times. We might pick up the speed, or you might do less if you're feeling tilty. I'm feeling a little tilty, reverse lunge, and laterally, we'll work it out. Again, hinge it, reverse lunge it, lateral lunge, three. Again, hinge, lunge, lateral. Working the hip in all three right planes of motion, and it's really the standing leg that is kind of doing a lot of the work. Tricky, huh? Tricky. Beautiful. We're about halfway in the set. Keep doing what you're doing all on the same side. Nice long spine. Think of your shoulders being back down and around. About one more. And relax. Ooh, shake it out, both sides. Ooh, hip core. Hip core mobility. All that jazz on the second side. Here we go, team. Hinge, lunge, lateral. Second side, here we go. Hinge it, arms up. Might be different, hips even. Reverse it, then lateral. Feel free to add the arms in there if you want. The arms reach high. Good. And then move your across the body in that lateral. We're on number two, so go towards eight. We're in it. Hinge it, knee up, lunge it, reach to the opposite. About three now. So as you move, we're about halfway through the set, team. I want you to envision we're doing all these exercises today, but with a load. So know how there's some movements where there's a little momentum, but what's working? So when you're hinging, standing foot is working. When you're lunging, front foot is working. Lateral lunge, outside foot pushes you away. Think about that as we do two more. It will all sink in our functional movement as we prep for it. Last one. And relax. Okay, we're gonna bring it down to the floor for a little bit more core warm up. Now, remember our circuits was a leg circuit. Our leg circuit will look similar to all those movements we did. 
and we have a core arm circuit. So let's warm up for that. So we're here, hands underneath the shoulders. First movement, bird dog as an option. If you want, come to a plank, hands only or feet only. We're gonna warm that up for about 30 seconds. If you're not going down to your wrist, you could stay here and party with the opposite arm, opposite leg extending as you're standing. So 30 seconds to warm up some instability. Let's check it. Starting in three, two, one. Here we go. So you're on your knees, reaching in opposition or hands, toes. Ha, ah, reaching in opposition. Keep that head up. Beautiful, breathe in here. Five seconds to go. Staying on the floor in three, two, one. Relax, go into the next part, which is our dolphins on the floor. We're gonna warm up through our shoulders because that's how we access our core. When there's a load up top, you gotta use your core ah, to, to kind of engage as you're doing like a swing. So bring your elbows down to beneath the shoulders, come to your toes, and you're just gonna rock it back and drop your chest here in a plank. So we're gonna do it for a minute. Let me come up and show you. Elbows underneath the shoulders, hands here. Plank is when your rib cage is in front of the hip, but your hip isn't tilted up. So we're gonna find a rock forward and then our nice neutral rib over hip. The reason for this is we might explore swings today, and so we need to find where our end point of rib over hip is, okay? Not here or here. So let's all envision that. We're gonna try it out for a minute. Getting it started in three, two, one, on the elbows. Find that rib over hip. And then from here, explore. What does it feel like to drop the chest, lift the butt up? versus dropping the hips down. If you go too far, you feel it in your low back. Just right is that rib over hip. Now, dolphin rock it back. Go back, come to neutral. Hip up, come to neutral. Again, hip up, come to neutral. So what I am kind of drawing in our mind right now is that when we do a swing, our hip comes up. A, dead, a kettlebell swing, which we will get to. And then when you come in the top of that swing, you're coming to neutral. So these dolphin rocks are pretty much like a kettlebell swing. You are practicing finding that sweet spot of how far you rock it back, how far you rock to get that rib over hip. Three more seconds, two and one. Okay, team, come on up, come on up. <laughs> Let's get that party started. The party was already beginning, but now we're bumping it up into weighted land, okay? Mobility done. We talked about some rib over hip positioning. We warmed up the hips and the core. We're ready to go here. So here are the three movements of the circuit. First one, grab something heavy, kettlebell or dumbbell. I'll show the dumbbell first, uh, the kettlebell first, and I'll show the dumbbell second. So heavy deadlift, you can have one or two kettlebells, you want your shoulders back down and anchored. Deadlift about mid shin, or as far as you can go, feeling that hamstring stretch point without rounding. For some people, it's here. See how my wrists are by my knees? For some people, it's about mid shin. I don't want you to go towards the floor, because that's when you're head is below your hip and let's just work in something different we want to work our glutes that is number one okay if you want to you can take it into a swing so come into the swing is a from a deadlift position going to about shoulder height all glutes rib over hip okay that's your option 40 seconds of one of those we'll get into some lateral lunge cleans coming up later but we'll talk about that later. So first exercise, actually I think we have one, two, three, four, five exercises in the circuit because if you count each leg as one. Let's get it all started, deadlifts or cleans, ready, set, and go. Dumbbell friends, if you have a dumbbell, you're holding it like this, or if you have two, you're holding it like this, same concept. Go down to knee height or swing 
boom. Just a little bit more space you might need if you're swinging too. So I recommend doing that skier swing. Let that chest drop and we're on. 15 seconds to go, hip power. Think about that rib over hip, yeah? When I hear people get injured from kettlebells, it's often because of a swing, they're doing this. So rib over hip, three, two, one. Okay, relax, one medium weight. We'll talk this out together. Stay in a lateral lunge, go from here, bring it up to shoulder, okay? Lateral lunge, shoulder, here we go. So my kettlebell friends, kettlebell goes toward the opposite and you're bringing it up into this rack position. Dumbbell friends, same thing. Here, up, here, up. Now you're using your hip to get you down. And this is where some of y'all might come into some wrist banging things. So a clean with the kettlebell is corkscrewing it, the kettlebell around the arm. Boom, careful for flopping it. It just goes straight up, straight down. Rest on that nook rack position. Three, two, one, relax, other side. We'll do this a couple times. Cleans are hard. It takes a people a couple weeks when I work with clients, two to three weeks if you're using a kettlebell to not bang up the wrist. There's a learning period. So you have your watch, take it off, we'll flip it. Here, here. So your lateral lunge, use that power up. Across the body core movement, boom. Yes, only difference here with the dumbbell is you're curling it up. It's just a little bit more momentum to get it up there. Good team. Elbow stays in tight, whether you're doing one or the other. Use that momentum with the legs. Five seconds to go. Three, two, one. Okay, team, staying on one leg. We're gonna be here holding the single leg and you're gonna switch, okay? This is a little bit of hip stability training. Hold it here, maybe you just hold. Now, if you want, take the kettlebell or dumbbell, switch hands. Don't let go of it till the other one catches. You can also kick stand down. What I want is this hip, that glute to work. So if you gotta ground that leg for it to work, so you don't feel like you're falling, go for it. Hips even, feel the glute work, that's the only goal here. Up to you how far you drop it. As when I say drop it, drop the chest. Now, if you do have a dumbbell, a little bit more, uh, harder on that transition. Same thing though. Relax, other leg. Single leg or kickstand, switching. So you see some of the differences between the dumbbell and kettlebell? It's really a grip thing. Sometimes it's a center of gravity thing, but for this one, it's a grip thing. So hinge it, here we go. Go ahead, switch the arms, hip down. Ah. Kickstand. 70% of the weight in that front leg, or single leg deadlift hold, all the weight. As long as we're getting that glute fire, you're getting that functional strength for what you need when you run, do a lot of lateral things, or hiking up big hills. That's what you're training for here. Relax, okay, that was everything from the top. Grab your heavy weight, deadlifts or swings. The first time is a trip. You gotta see everything. Now we do the enjoyment round. Ready, set, here we go. So you're deadlifting. Round two, fundamentals, rib over hip. Check in. Now if you're feeling good, you can add a little bit of pace on there. Whether it's a swing or deadlift. Hip power. Make sure to breathe. Keep your head going with you. I am guilty of this. I watch my videos. I'm like this when I'm swinging. Head goes with the torso, whether you're deadlifting or not. Relax. Okay, lateral lunge cleans. If you want to explore that grip placement and momentum with the kettlebell, now's the time. 
Ready, set, here we go. Rock position, elbow down, wrist on top, kettlebell lifted, lateral lunge across. Same side repeats. You're catching the kettlebell across the diagonal. Dumbbell friends, you are gonna have a little bit of neutral wrist to keep them in mind. You want that neutral wrist as you pull across, as you reach and bring it up. Reach and bring it up. Careful as you wobble, yeah? We're getting our wrist strong here. We're getting everything. Three, two, one, relax, other side. Kettlebell or dumbbell, okay? Let's do other side. Beautiful lateral lunges. Getting it started in three, two, one. Hip down, bring it across. Just like our warm up, that outside leg is our power. You think it's the arm getting it up, but it's that push, translating across the core to the shoulder. Tricky. Uh, kind of comes in there, that full body work. My goodness, 10 more seconds to go. Woo! As your arm starts to get tired or your body gets tired, your leg. Woo! Keep the fundamentals, relax. Oh, easier said than done. Tap it out, swing it out. Single leg deadlift. Switches, medium to lightweight. Ready, set, go. Keep in mind, as we get tired, coordination becomes harder. Number one, always think, grab the kettlebell or dumbbell, then let the other arm go. Because this is the one I see the most in terms of swinging or anything else, where people kind of let go of the weights, yeah? Think about the grip, then switch. Good. Explore the instability. Keep that hip down. Stay on one side. We got five more seconds coming up. Five, three, one. Other side. Woo. Shake it out. Shoulders back. Mm. This is all low body. This is all core stability. Ready, set? Here we go. Hinge it. Switch it. Make it smooth. One side, other side. 10 seconds to go. Just one right after another. Not stopping. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, round two done. Take a second, grab what you need. Round three, the finale, the party, the deadlift swing. On your marks, get set. And here we go. Deadlift at home or big, beautiful kettlebell swing. We're holding on to that kettlebell dumbbell, but not necessarily gripping it. Loose but firm grip as we go into the finish that round three. Hip power. Ten seconds to go, team. Push your feet into the floor on that hip swing or deadlift. Five, three, and one. Land it. Ah, that was fancy. That's called a dead land. You land it in a dead position. We'll talk about that one next time. Queens, queens. Here we go, cross, up. Use that momentum, but in a controlled manner. That's another thing about functional fitness and kettlebell training. There's not so much isolations as we want to utilize everything. Use that momentum to get it up, but be able to control it up and down. It's not controlling us. We're using that outside leg. We're milking that elbow in. Yes, yes, three, two, 
one. Other side. Okay. Second side. Same thing. Just like you did. On your marks, get set. Lateral. Here we go. Up. Boom. Good team. 15 seconds to go. Just down and up. Keep going. Five seconds here. Three, two, one. Ay, ay, ay. Put that down. We got our little switches. Boom, boom. You could do that without a weight if you wanted. Make it yours. Make it yours. Ready, set. Here we go. Pass it. Let's count it out if you want. 10. So 20 seconds to go. So if you're counting, you might be up to 20, maybe 30. One reason that might be interesting is if you hit 20 and 30 on one side, let's try to hit that on the other side. Five seconds to go. Three, two, one. Other side. If you counted, you can check in. Oftentimes, when one side is just much different than the other, that's when it gives you a key if you have a knee or hip problem of how we can train that up. So, this is a great drill to do on your own. Count on each side in a certain time period. We're off 647 today. If you wait for the moment, here it is. If you wait for what will happen, you can't miss. You are the number Ten seconds to go. Ah, oh, my right side. It just is a tapper. Oh, I work on my right glute. Ah. <laughs> oh. It one, it's one that likes attention. Three, two, one. Ooh, one side might have been incredibly harder than the other. Shake it out. Done with that circuit. Okay. Grab a towel, water if you want it. This is kind of our halfway point in the circuits. If you don't, another option I'm going to teach you today is a rack carry. So if you have two dumbbells, you hold them two hands. I want one dumbbell to be light and one to be heavy. Same thing with kettlebells. Or you can be doing active recovery, getting water and stretching here, okay? Now, take the light kettlebell, go to a rock position or dumbbell, rock position, what other equipment you have, is that wrist right over the elbow, elbow kind of resting by the rib cage. That's a strong position for the shoulder. Other one, heavy, neutral wrist, watch for this, okay? We're gonna do a lap, 30 second lap, Let's go. So we're walking figure eights here. Wrapped asymmetric carry. If this is not the everyday life, ah, carrying, carrying things on the shoulder, this is functional fitness, okay? If you have dumbbells, I often tell people if they want to make a pair of light dumbbells heavy, you can crisscross them. And yes, you are working shoulder grip. I mean, hand grip. That is so functional, working that strength. Okay, 30 seconds done on that side. Be mindful of how to put things up. I teach you this in class and I want you to do it in daily life. So you get it here, keep the elbow close, place it all the way down and now switch. Because I see people in daily life going, oh, keep everything close, pick it up. Suitcase, rack it up, dumbbell or not. Second side, walk around, active recovery. Go, go. Here we are. If you want, second side. I can tell you there are no lunges in the next set. So, you got adventurous. Round two, you got 10 seconds to go. Three, 
two, one. Okay, put it down, elbow near. Pinch it, set it down, crisscross. Okay, that was fun. Different variation on a carry than we, what we did last time. We mixed it up with the asymmetric carry. Also works the core, because you gotta keep that asymmetric load in there, okay? Great thing to work in on your off days or in between sets. Okay, push, pull, core. Round two means floor. We'll be on the floor a lot. Get yourself comfy. Plank pull throughs look like this. Dumbbell or kettlebell is in the bridge near the belly button. Place it there, but now place it on the outside of that wrist. And I'm gonna pull it through by driving it through. So I go here, drag, other side, down, here, drag. But if you don't want to, you can lift it up and float it across. The dragging is a little bit less on that rotator cuff, so you might wanna move your mat accordingly. If you want, you can be plank on this, pull it through, replace, pull it through, replace. Some friends, prefer asymmetric work standing, this would be the alternative. Knees together, seated across. You have wrist things going on, I commit, recommend keeping it neutral. Plank pull throughs, number one. I'm gonna give you a preview of the next two so you know what weights to keep by you. Everything should be medium to heavy. You're gonna have two situated on either side. Options here, kettlebell or dumbbell. You're gonna do neutral, to exterior palm faces forward. Palms face each other, palms face forward. If you want, bridge up here, palm forward, palm neutral, but it stays at the rib cage. Doesn't go down to the floor all the way, it's right here, okay? So have your dumbbells or kettlebells right next to you, and the one you're pulling, you can grab and place there. The finisher is the halo. We'll come to one foot standing, kettlebell up, around, 20 seconds, and then the other side around 20 seconds. Now, when you have a dumbbell, the difference you feel is the center of gravity. So, with the kettlebell, you kind of get a little bit more challenge with the shoulder, because the center of gravity is pulling you around. You can do the same thing with the dumbbell, but go a little heavier if you need a little more. So, there you have it in three. We're all on the floor, row, row, bridge, bridge, halo, halo. Three exercises, three times. At seven minutes, about eight minutes worth of work. Let's set it on up, on our marks, get set, and here we go. Plank pull throughs. So grabbing that one weight, maybe on your knees to start, pull it over, pull it over. Alternating hands, neutral wrist. If you want, you can be on your knees or elevate it to the toes. Your hips will try to rock, but if you activate that low abdominal core, it will minimize the rock. We're not trying to get rid of the rock. We're trying to minimize it. Nice job, team. Keep pulling it through her place. Hit it, pull it through a place. Three, two, one. Weights on either side. Core chest press. So, laying on your back. Neutral wrist, ready, set, and go. Elbows into rib cage, it's not on the floor. Palms face each other. Now, push it out, palms face forward, bring it back in neutral. Push it out, palms face forward, bring it back in neutral. If you want, add a bridge, up and down. Doing the same thing with the dumbbell, but you don't have that extra little gravity kind of resisting the shoulder stabilizers as you press, so you might be able to go heavier. You're still getting the same amount of work, but no, this engagement of squeezing the elbows in and then rotating is that extra core work, extra shoulder work, relax. Okay, enough of that one. Come up to one knee, one knee in the heavy weight. Let's get that weight belly up, elbows narrow, and bring it around. Hey, what's happening to that low body? <laughs> I feel like my upper body's trying to do the hula dance. So I'm gonna try to minimize that, all right? The hips and shoulders 
trying to stay as neutral as possible. And I had to think about that kind of corset, wrapping in, keeping the rib cage anchored as I go around. We're gonna do all 40 seconds on one direction if you haven't switched. We'll do half, half next time. Beautiful, three, two, one. Relax, okay, let's do it all again. Kind of a shorter circuit, three exercises. Plank pull throughs, knees or toes. Let's get right in front of it. Through the tunnel, ready, set, here we go. Pull it through, pull it through. Good team. Nice neutral spine as you pull. 15 seconds to go. Ah, uh, shoulders core on these three. Shoulders core. 10 seconds now. Keep pressing that hand and opposite foot into the floor as you drag it across. Relax. Bridge. Remember that engagement. Elbows in. Push. You'll get a little extra there. We always like that little extra. Ready, set, go. I'll show one and one. Here's my dumbbell, here's my kettlebell. And we're on, press it up. Elbow squeeze in the side. Press it up, bring it back home. Press it up, bring it back home. Optional bridge. Now make it nice and smooth. Once you go up, go straight back down. High to low, high to low. Making that momentum work with you. Three, two, one. Bicep curl it down. Shimmy, shimmy. Cocoa puffs. Ah, halo, let's do the other side. So opposite direction, opposite leg up. Slightly in forward. Here we go. Around, around, in front. Keep it close to the head. If you can, anyone who's feeling a little bummed in their shoulders, like it's oh, really sticky and you're having to whip your head around, I recommend maybe doing a wood chop instead to work with the shoulder mobility first, rather than kind of trying to put it in a position that doesn't feel great, yeah? So that's the option as we head towards the third round. You got five seconds to go. Three, two, one. Plank pull throughs. Third and final round. Look how quick this one's going. We did all that upfront cardio work to start, and now we're bringing it home with stability core. Ready, set, here we go. Pull it through. Beautiful work, y'all. 20 seconds to go. Ah, getting to the top of that hill. Just replace one side, other side. Three, two, one. Relax. Bridge presses. Oh, these are sneaking up. up. This is where it kind of gets a little sticky. Ugh. We're on the last round. Here we go. Elbows in and push. Push, bridge or not. That kettlebell's resting on the outer forearm if you have it. Otherwise, that dumbbell going up and down to the ceiling. Let's talk about making it smooth. Up, down, up, down. One, two, alternate, high, low. Just go to that smooth pace, whatever your pace is. Beautiful shoulder stability as we press. Three, two, one. Ugh. Okay, let's see how interesting these halos get. <laughs> Remember the wood chop option. Uh, on your marks, get set, 20 seconds per side. Here we go. Halos, one direction. Uh, 
everything close and make it smooth. Once you go around, bring it back. Other side, set it up in three, two, one. Second side, here we go. So you're going the opposite direction now. How do you have to activate your core to not do the hula? Oh, harder said. 10 seconds. Five and three, two, one. Oh, I'm feeling muscles I've never felt before. That's good. <laughs> Let's stretch it out, team. One kneeling. So when your foot was in front, just take it out to the side at a diagonal, nook it in, and reach on up. Should feel pretty good if you don't want to kneel. It's kind of an elevated stance here, or if you want to get a little deeper stretch in the low body, which we did work today, come to a kind of a lateral lunge, like a diagonal. Four breaths, reach it up, get tall. Four, three, two, one. Oh, good, good, good. Let's come back down, step forward. That foot steps towards the diagonal, look. Get nice and tall, reach it, look up, look back. If you want, bring that back leg up. Adjust your hips and feet as needed. Four breaths. Four, and three, two, one, okay. Coming down to the floor, we're gonna do a nice downward dog or a dolphin hold. So on like our warm up, where we're doing dynamic and moving, we're just gonna ha ah, relax into it. So hands underneath the shoulders or elbows. I will demo depth dolphin. Tuck the toes and drop the hand, lift the hips, push the hands into the floor. Four breaths. Here we go. And four. Three, two, and one. Okay, bringing the hands underneath the shoulders. Pigeon, thread it through. Relax it down. Or 90 90. Ready, set, and melt into it. Four breaths. And other side. Switching it. Come to a quick plank. Knee threads on under. Rest and relax in that pigeon, keeping the hips even. My personal favorite, 90-90, also an option. Ready, set it up. And just melt into it. Four breaths here. walking it on up. Tuck your toes, inch it up, however feels good to you. And let's get a little bit deeper in the shoulders. Remember when we did our warm up? So start here, squeeze the shoulder blades, squeeze the shoulder blades. Now go as far back as you can with the hands and grab the elbows. Nice stretch here. That should feel good. Woo, get an evening season up in there to shake it out. Elbows back down and around. Drop the rib cage. If you want, lift the hands and hold. High will stay right here. Nice hug of the hands or the shoulders. Now, if you want, take the head. Ear tilts to one side, looking down. Look on up. And let's go ahead and switch grip. Okay, back, 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 back. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Explore, explore. See if you can give your elbows a hug. And you might kind of drop your elbows back down there. Ooh. Okay. And looking on down. Hugging the shoulder blades. Letting any tension go that might have built up in that neck. Three, two, one. Okay, let's do the opposite here. Palms press together, press together. Let the palms out and just curl and curve into it. Four breaths, four, 
three, two, one, and draw a big circle. Yeah. Oh, one direction. Other direction. Feeling that lateral stretch as you go around. Three, two, one. Okay, come and finishing up with our classics. Nook the elbows in there. Feel that nice inner thigh stretch. How different your upper body and legs might feel since you start the class. Add a rotation if you want. And other side. And three big reaches. Take it up, 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 up. Big reach, big lift. I'll let that go two more times. Big lift. Take it all in. And last one. Big reach, big lift. Let all that tension go. Ha! Ah, we did it. Give yourself a hand. Exploring new movements, maybe new equipment. High five, team.